In this video, we will show you how to replace your rear parking brake shoes on this Dodge Ram. These will be mounted behind your rear wheel and rear brakes. Let's get into it. Okay, friends, let's get started on our job. The first thing you want to do is safely raise and support the rear of the vehicle so the wheel is off the ground. Once you've done that, we'll continue on to removing all eight of our 24 millimeter lug nuts and then the wheel. Now that we have the wheel off of there, the next thing we want to pay attention to is our caliper. We will be removing this. So before you do, you want to make your way into each of these two areas and carefully push back the caliper pistons. We'll do that using a small pry bar. Once you have movement from there, we'll make our way to our two caliper slider bolts. To remove each of these mounting bolts, we'll be using a 13 millimeter. We'll loosen the top one first, leave it in there just a couple threads, and then remove the second. There's that first one. Once we have that off of the vehicle, we want to pay attention to the areas of the caliper where those two pistons are. We're looking to see if there's any fluid in this area. If there is, it's probably brake fluid, in which case you'd have to replace the caliper. Before we set this aside, let's press back each one of these pistons as far back as possible. To push in these pistons, you want to make sure you push them both in at the same time. There's a small piece of wood in this area. Now we can continue on with our dual piston caliper depression tool. Double check those pistons for fluid. These look great. We can set this aside for now. Now we can remove the pads from the area. Whenever I remove these, I always like to give them a close inspection. If it looks like they're worn at an angle, that would tell you that you're having an issue with either the pistons or the sliders on the caliper itself. With the caliper out of the way, we'll continue on to removing the caliper bracket. For this, you'll find that you have two 21 millimeter headed mounting bolts to remove. Leave that first one in there a little bit. Remove the bracket, we'll give it a quick inspection and we can set this aside. Now we can remove our brake rotor, we'll take hold of this, give it a little wiggle and pull it off. We'll give it a quick inspection, set it aside. Now with that brake rotor out of the way, we have a clear view of our parking brake shoes and the hardware. To start removing the shoes, we'll start on one side. You'll find that you have an anchor pin that comes through from the back side of the backing plate, straight on through the backing plate and the shoe, and it has a metal clip holding it in place. To start removing this, we'll be using a small pry bar, and you want to press in on that clip. While you're pressing that in towards the shoe, use some long nose pliers, grab onto the head of that pin, and give it a little twist until it comes to the unlocked position. With that in the unlocked position, we'll release this clip, just want to pop right off of there. We'll give that a quick inspection. We can remove that pin. 
With that anchor pin out of the way, we'll be paying attention up along this area where your adjuster is located. We need to remove the adjuster and this spring. When you're working on the driver's side, it will be up along the top. The passenger side, it'll be located along the bottom. Let's go ahead and carefully do this, being extremely careful for any pinch points. We'll slide this out of position. Watch our eyes, of course. Now we can start removing that adjuster. Here's the other side of it. You want to remember how this was in the vehicle? We had this area of the adjuster facing towards the front of the truck. Let's reach in here and grab onto this spring. We'll remove this as well. Now we can take hold of this shoe. We'll be paying attention down along the bottom as we do so. We want to pull this out of place and then remove the spring. Sometimes this will be stuck in place. Just use some long nose pliers. Let's start removing the other shoe. We'll use a long pry bar to remove the clip and then some long pliers to remove the pin. Now we can take hold of this, give it a wiggle and pull it out of here. We'll remove the spring from this now. Just go ahead and give that a little twist. There we are. Get this out of here. Now the next thing we'll want to do is clean up the backing plate and make sure that the e-brake actuator functions properly. To make sure this works properly, we're going to hold onto the actuator. We'll reach over, grab that emergency brake cable, give it a little tug. We want to make sure this moves freely. If it doesn't, use some penetrant and then of course lubricate it once you're done. We are replacing our emergency brake hardware, but what you would want to do would be to take yours apart and make sure you clean it and lubricate the threaded area. Now that I've done that, I'll put on the star adjuster here. We'll bring this almost all the way up to the top and then we can put on the bottom piece. Let's set this aside. Let's continue on with our lubricant here. You'll find on your backing plate, you have several raised areas. We'll be lubricating those because that is where the shoe will sit. This is going to help with vibration dampening and noise reduction. We'll also make sure we get down inside this area, once again, where the shoe is going to sit up against, and along the forward side. Now we can prepare to put on our emergency brake shoes with the hardware. We'll be starting with this spring right here. For this, we want to take it and put it right on through that bottom slot on the shoe. It should be in this position. Now with the spring on there, let's take this shoe. We'll be putting it into place and putting in our anchor. We have our anchor pin. That's going to come through the backing plate hole and then through the hole in the shoe. Now we can continue on with our clip. You'll find on the clip you have a rectangular slot. We want to make sure that that aligns with the pin. Take hold of that pin, we'll give this a little spin. At this point, it should look like an X. Let's swing this over, let's get this shoe on here. Now we'll bring the shoe up and around this area. This part can be a little bit difficult, be careful for any pinch points. We'll swing that actuator down. There we are. Now we can continue on with the shorter spring. Since we're doing the driver's side, this will go up along the top. Slide that right into the hole over there. We'll stretch this shoe, do the same thing. Now it's time for the adjuster. 
As for this adjuster, you want to make sure that you have the adjustment wheel closest towards the front of the vehicle. If you put it in backwards, you're going to have an issue. At this point, I'll be taking a pry bar. I'm going to gently start separating the shoes so I can slide this into place. Be careful for pinch points. Just make sure it's seated properly. No, that side's too low. There we go. Double check to make sure it's completely in there. And now we can continue on to our final anchor point. Confirm it's seated properly. Let's move along to cleaning up the hub mating surface. For this, we'll use some parts cleaner and a little wire brush. Let's apply some anti-seize to this area, being extremely careful not to get in on our parking brake shoes. We're at the point that we can start putting on our brake rotor. Before we do so, I want to talk to you about the adjuster here. On the backing plate, there's a small slot that you can gain access from the backside, making your way to this adjuster. So we would just use a small angled pry bar or screwdriver, whatever you have. Come in through the backside there, and you should be able to move this up or down to adjust the shoes out or in, depending on which way you spin it. Now with that said, we'll be taking the rotor, sliding it right on over here, and we'll make sure that the shoes are not hitting directly against it because that will cause friction, cause heat, cause these to expand, and possibly lock up your wheel. So at this point, I can spin this fairly freely. Obviously, I can't turn the axle because the vehicle is in park. But what I would want to do is make my way along the backside there. I'm going to make an adjustment with that cog until I feel just a tiny bit of drag on this, a little bit of resistance. Once I've done that, I'll just back it off a tiny bit so there is no drag, and then we can continue. Once you've made your adjustment, make sure you put on your protective cover. This should just slide right into this hole here. Once you feel as though you have it in the proper position, you can also use your small pry bar. Just go ahead and press it in all the way. Once you feel as though you have the proper adjustment, make your way along the backside. We'll be using a small pry bar for this. I want to pry up against this mounting stud and nut and up against the e-brake actuator. You want to make sure that this can move. If it only moves a tiny bit, you've over adjusted. If it moves too much, you're under adjusted. Let's go ahead and do this. That pushes to right there and then it stops. And that's where those parking brake shoes are hitting up against our brake rotor. That's a good amount of movement. Like I said, if it moves too far, that means that the parking brake is going to have to pull too far and the shoes won't hold. Let's get ready to install that bracket. We'll take our two bolts, start those in by hand. Once both of them are started, we can snug them up and torque them to 100 foot pounds. Now we can install our brake pads. You'll find that the inboard pad will have the wear indicator. We want that facing down. Take this and slide it right in position here. The outboard pad's a little bit more difficult to slide in because it has this area. We're going to have to come in at a sharp angle. Once you're into that area, you can go ahead and press it in. Confirm that the pads can move around in this area.
Now we can install our two slider bolts. We'll start these in by hand so we're sure they are not cross-threading. Snug them up and then torque them to 24 foot-pounds. Confirm that you definitely torqued everything along the way and double check that flex hose to make sure it's not twisted in any way. Now we can get the wheel on here. We'll start on all the lug nuts, bottom them out, get the wheel safely back on the ground and then torque each of these lug nuts to 135 foot pounds. Now that the wheel is safely on the ground, we'll torque these in a crisscross manner. Torqued. Okay friends, we've got our truck back together. At this point, you want to make sure you do the exact same thing on the other side of the vehicle. Once you've done that, pump up the brake pedal till it's nice and firm. Apply your emergency brake, put your vehicle in drive, and make sure that the parking brake works as it should. Aside from that, thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.